doing a trauma-sensitive school symposium. Uh, the reason that we decided that we needed to start organizing a conference like this was just because uh, it, trauma-sensitive uh, practices and trauma-informed practices have been a little slow to, uh, to Arizona as a whole, um, but also to schools and healthcare facilities. Um, and so this was one way that we felt we could reach out to a large number of advocates for children, um, including educators, uh, school staff, like social workers, school counselors, administration. Um, this was an opportunity that we could get everybody kind of together in the same space talking about some uh, similar ideas. And the scenario is worth, worse for students with disabilities, LGBTQ youth, students of color, Research demonstrates, not surprisingly, racial disparities in school discipline, with black, Latino, and Native American students more likely to be suspended for the same behavior as their white counterparts. And not only are they punished more severely, but often for behaviors that are less serious. So we have to look at like, what are we doing to address that trauma? Because when we say all things are equal, they're not equal, because there's this historical trauma that's baked into the system. If one were to experience one of their parents being taken away. The only thing they feel is, now my dad's gone. Now my mom's not happy. And I heard a student say once, hearing my dad name or seeing it on Blackboard or seeing it in the roster or having it launched out by a, a substitute teacher is daily trauma. It kind of leads me to think, okay, like we need more understanding about like why is this traumatizing? Why would something like that be, be so traumatizing? And it makes sense, right? Like a part of your identity is not being respected or affirmed. And then how can you learn in school? We can begin to imagine something new and something different because we are makers of history. We can be makers of history if we would just be bold enough to do that.